It's nice when you have a kindred soul to praise you or kick you in the ass. I made him drive separate cars for the first couple yeah, of years. I can understand because why, though. If I have to think about every micro adjustment that I'm doing in that mix, it's too late. Throughout the storied careers of production sound team Mark Ilano and Patrushka Mierzwa, these two creative and life partners have gathered a stockpile of useful knowledge and wisdom. During our behind the scene conversations, we wandered down several interesting rabbit holes about various hard and soft skills involved in working on a film crew. It's for these reasons that we've decided to cut together one last video with Mark and Petrushka. Why did you guys start working together? Was it out of, you know, just, I mean, in a way, did, did it seem like a, a natural progression? Like, from my point of view, yes. Um, we didn't just start working together right mm. off the bat. Mm. Um, Patricia has a degree in fashion from FITM, and mm -hmm. she was in transition in those early days um, to something that she would hope would be more satisfying for her than, than she loved that world, but yeah. the actuality of it on set, for, for, you know, at that entry level place was pretty uh, stark. Mm. Um, crazy hours, um, a lot, you know, not much pay, mm -hmm. um, people wanted you, well, I shouldn't speak for yeah. too much, but, but she made a change yeah. and started looking into the camera and sound yeah. and started taking classes and working with some other people and then we started, we did an AFI project together. She did utility, um, it was a high-end AFI project, mm -hmm. 35 millimeter with, you know, real, mm -hmm. a lot of serious professionals involved. And we found that we had, uh, there was I, for a my, common philosophy yeah, about work ethic and, and and she was never afraid of working her ass off and I wasn't afraid of working hard either and we liked that about each other um, she's strong yeah. person her strong personality true straight and true you know you might not always like what you hear but you're always going to hear the truth and as you get older if you you'll have you'll find that that's too rare yeah. um, I just, I just, you know, was really fortunate, and maybe she feels the same way. You have to ask her, but we are a good team. Yeah, it's, it's awesome to have you guys here as, as a partnership, as a duo. I was really excited to get you both in here. I think it's, you know, also as a, in, in my career, I'm constantly floating between the three positions of sound mixer, uh -huh. boom op, and sound utility. So uh -huh. I've got to really understand the, the importance of all three positions. So. As excited as I was to talk to you both individually, I think I'm more excited to talk to you as a team. Well, you get the whole picture if yes, you do. Yes, um, that's true. I, I have really benefited personally, privately, professionally, in every way by, by this incredible partnership that I've, that I've been so fortunate to, to uh, be part of. And, um, and I hope Petrushka feels the same way. I have a sense that she does, but uh, I never speak for her without First, you know, getting careful that I don't, because I don't because I live <laughs> in You've learned after 40 years, you know. <laughs> she is her person. She is not in any way, and no one should ever make the mistake that she is somehow some kind of subordinate or appendage or any of that shit. She cut her People own. People do make that mistake. They do. And yeah. uh, I pretty and much set them straight. You do. <laughs> Our first few years of working together, we never let on that we were also together as a couple. We, she would come to work separately from me. She had, I made him drive separate cars for the first couple yeah. of years. Yeah. I can understand because, why, though. Because who wants to be the mixer's girlfriend yeah. when you're well, dealing with territory that's very, very, you know, it's already Those days, fraught with its own challenges. Well, we're, we're talking yeah. 1980, 1981, which, yeah. which doesn't sound so long ago to me in my head, but in fact, is really at the lap dissolve out of the last five, 10 years of, of, of professional personnel on, on crew coming out of the whole studio system. Yeah. So we have this, you know, it's the transition out of the closed shop, father to son kind of environment where yeah. Um, things were of a certain way. Now, there's some very wonderful things that came from that, of that, course, that yeah. part, but um, but it also closed it off in some ways yeah, as well. You know, yeah. and she gave, you know, she could handle herself under load with anybody. You know, I don't doubt that. And, and <laughs> so, but it was good to know. Yeah, and I wouldn't have known unless I set up the parameters that I have to either make it or not 
on my own so that I know if I could do this because yeah, right. I didn't come from a sound background. Yeah. No. And I didn't come from a film background. Yeah. But she's an artist. Yeah. And that's a common thread between us. You know, we're both artists in different realms. Um, and we have this, you know, we have passions and disciplines in, in different realms. She's she's writing right now. I'm, I'm producing another documentary. Um, and that's our history is. Storytelling with sound for film has mm -hmm. been our highest profile, uh, you know, journey in, in our professional careers, but it's it's in parallel to other uh, other commitments and other passions, you know, yeah. photography, music, yeah. wardrobe, you know, uh, writing, we both write, so um, I don't know. It's nice when you have a, 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 a kindred soul to, yeah. to, to praise you or kick you in the ass. When, Absolutely. Because you need both. Yes. You know, and vice versa. And also just somebody who understands the amount of mental energy and emotion and commitment it takes to something like that. Mm -hmm. I, for me, that's been a, a huge part of why I've been able to flourish so quickly in this industry is because I, I have a very supportive partnership and somebody yeah. who very much understands that the hours are long, yeah, you know, and they don't end when you leave the set. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's, a, that's a reality. Um, it's not. It's not the best aspect of what we love to do, but you know, we we over <laughs> we overcompensate in a lot of other ways, <laughs> I guess. Um, and that's a conversation that I hope still you know grows to a more healthy place. You know, even as there's a lot of dissonance right now in the in the universe and the, and the cultures, yeah. not just our culture, but across the globe, which we've witnessed because we've been traveling through Asia and, and Europe uh, not almost constantly for the last two years. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this kind of ability to collaborate, yeah. this is a fundamental in moving forward in, in, in your chosen, you know, profession. You, you, you need the, the ability to set your ego at the door and or channel it towards solutions and, and to the project, yeah. not to your own sense of territory or conceit. I agree. Yeah. And that's a hard thing for a lot of people, especially, oh, yeah. if, you know, people are insecure. Yeah. And Everyone is. Don't let them yeah. tell you differently. It's, I think every so, single person struggles with that. But the yeah. problem, the, the thing is fear and anger are very obstructive to clear thinking. Mm -hmm. They stop your ability to, to overcome uh, what needs to be dealt with in yeah. life. And so um, having a kindred soul is often a good help to getting over yourself. That's our hardest thing, is getting out of, out of the way of our own crap, each of us. So. It's something that's yeah. very important in film. Very important. Fear and insecurity are internal mm. thought processes, and you can't afford them on a set because there's, you need to concentrate on the work, so. Yeah. It gets yeah, in the way of fun. It does, it absolutely <laughs> it does. It does that too. Yeah. I relate but very it gets much. In, if you're if you're thinking inwardly, you're not thinking about the project. Yeah. Of course. So if there are ever moments when I feel insecure on a set, I just think about what does the work need, and I concentrate on the work, and it all falls into place. Yeah. yeah, that is why I really wanted to speak with both of you because you teach, because you have a an eloquent way of teaching. You know, because it's it's hard when you have somebody who's very knowledgeable on the technology and the methods and you know like just you could be the most knowledgeable person ever but if you can't convey it to someone else how are they gonna yeah, know it's, <laughs> right. it's 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 a key thing it's, it's very common in music to have great musicians um, not really have engaged deeply in the discipline of teaching yes. and great teachers not necessarily being you know, I, I, I'm a second generation percussionist yeah. you, I don't know if you know that I do, you, you yeah. do know that. Um, <laughs> and that experience that journey with my father was a very prominent writer teacher player in the drum world he created community where there was none and wrote thousands of, literally thousands of drum books, and really broke a 200-year tradition of, of zero literature for percussion, yeah. um, other than military uh, things. And so that whole notion of teaching as a calling, um, sustained by a, a profound, committed discipline in the instrument, yeah. is something that has been part of my thing, my TA, for, yeah. for, 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 for sound, for filmmaking, because my self-identify and I think the highest compliment I can have or, or give is that as a filmmaker. 
Yeah. I'm a musician also. I was a What's music your teacher, mainly guitar. That's been like 20 something years been guitar, but I, I sang, I composed. Todd and I are both composers, pianists. Good. Um, okay. So I relate to that. Whenever you were the first person I ever heard talk about production sound or, or really recording any kind of dialogue, anything not musical, and, and really relate it in a way that I felt so akin to, you know, it's talking about it musically and, and in this very colorful language. So that was like, I, you know, I have to meet that guy someday. I have to talk to him. Really? Check that list. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to check this. Um, it is profoundly similar and in terms of spirit, maybe identical mm -hmm. to the discipline required for, for, for pursuing music as, as a lifetime, you know, avocation, mm -hmm. vocation. Um, all of the parallels are, are, are uh, obvious to me anyway. You know, you're, you're, you need a system of learning, you need to be a perpetual student, you need to practice uh, within a system of practice on a daily basis, um, whether it's your first day or you're 90 years old. Um, you, like athletes, yeah, athletes absolutely. and musicians really set the bar in terms of having a system for maintaining their their relevance and their craft. Yes. Uh, and so that, that yeah. with craft, you, you need craft foundationally so you can achieve the, the art side of things. Mm -hmm. And that's true, you know, a great musician will make an inferior instrument sound, sound beautiful. Sound amazing. And, an, 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 and a not, not so up to it musician is not going to make a Stradivarius or a Granary, you know, sound any better than their skill will reach. Yeah. So uh, I, I think it's the same for us. I really do, and I'm glad to hear that. You know, I'm not sure how many people get that an an analogy when yeah. I when I, I raise it, but it's how I've lived my life in in filmmaking. Is this idea that I'm part of a musical organization, a band, an orchestra, yeah, orchestra or, or you know, and we have a conductor, you know, called a director, and a score called a script. You know, if we're in non, in narrative work, and even if we're not, um, the the thing that also is parallel essential in some ways is that that 10,000 hour thing you transition after a certain point into fluency mm. um, rather than you know it's like a language right. you know when you stop thinking word by word right. line by line and start thinking in the language now you've achieved fluency and it's, it's becomes more of a muscle memory reaction yeah you're in another place yeah. with with the same tool set but you're not you're not sitting in, you know because if, if I'm in a mix mm. and I, it might be one or 15 or 30 elements or you might be migrating throughout the dynamic of a particular scene if i have to think about every micro adjustment that i'm doing in that mix it's too late yeah. just the way when you play an instrument a guitar or a piano or, or drums you know yeah. you're you want to be thinking ahead you're in another place yes. you're in flow and flow is the difference between you know um, it being okay and it being great yeah flow well, I really love talking to other mixers, like all these people who have just been doing it for so long. And I came into sound way later than they did, obviously. And everything that I've been using, all the tools at my disposal, I, I learned to work with. And it's kind of shaped how I think about sound and how I think about recording sound. But listening to how they started and what they started with, mm -hmm. it's kind of shifted my focus a little bit to like a more... Good. Um, what's not not simple mindset, but like kind of back to the the basics of like it's really not Focus. about yes, it's not about what you have, it's about what you're doing with it and how well you know the tool. I'll go back to that earlier thing I said about being a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. um, what is the goal? What is the uh, what is the uh, you know point of all this? And for me, it's it does get very simple. It's maintaining connection between the characters and the audience, mm -hmm. and the storytelling through the characters, the journey they're on, and the environment in which they have that journey. They're all components of that, and yeah. we're part of a we're part of a triangle of collaboration in the sound arts in particular. And on production, we're the front end. We yep. capture the original performances. We lay the bed. We're making the the original pass the mix of how audiences will experience these characters on this on, in this story. So if that's the fundamental, then the tools become um, an essential part of your learning curve and your, uh, your, your palette of, of options in terms of creative ideas and solutions when you're, when you're challenged by issues that are environment, environment acoustic, yep. uh, experience, you know, experience level of performers and experience level of the other colleagues that you're, you're working with. Right. Um, 
but if you if you have that as your higher sensibility, you don't have to become an ideologue about the tools. Right. A lot of us become seduced by the technique and tools. This happens in music all the time. Absolutely. You know, I've seen more drummers be in a in a in a, in a, a debate over match grip versus conventional grip, <laughs> and it makes me want to go, ah, you know, yeah. because I say you need them both. Yeah. These each are in, these each are fundamental tools that are applicable in specific situations, and to have an ideology of one tool versus another tool is self-defeating. It's, it's I agree. It, it goes against enlightened self-interest. I agree. What is it about simplicity in this art form that that can be our, our friend and not our enemy? It's it's about that issue of maintaining connection with with the character to, for the audience. It. it isn't necessary to um, over over uh, approach something to use way more than you need to. It's a technique that's important. It's not something to say you don't do because that's that's a that's a negative ideology. But if I want part of what I need to do is make a free space for actors. So what does that mean? It depends on the actors and what their nature of the project is and where they're at. If, it, if it's an ensemble and it's comedy and there's uh, never the same way once, you're going to have take after take that's completely different because they're improvising or whatever, then it becomes a matter of, of creating more approaches simultaneously. And that's one of the things that our tools now versus a long time ago has changed in terms of you know success rates. You know I can I can have four or five different game plans operational at the same time um, and draw from them actually you know uh, by juxtaposing in the mix depending on what's going on. Um, that wasn't always the case. That you know some of the best sounding movies were done with a mono, you know 80 90 percent of movies were done historically with a, with a mono uh, capability and three or four mics. Absolutely. Um, does that mean that they were less sophisticated? Not at all. It just means that the tools they were using were more drawn on the acoustic ear before electric recording, and then the, not, the organic nature of how they move that forward through the 30s and 40s and 50s and even 60s and 70s, in fact. And so um, sometimes you, you mess up a dish in the kitchen by just too many things. Yes. And sometimes just the simplest ingredient done simply is the most elegant outcome. So that's a, a thing to keep in your mind when you're approaching material. Apology a is thing. an important it's thing. Setup. It's it's it it's a very significant thing. But if it's applied for something that is not something that is your responsibility, mm. um, you're now taking on the burden of having. You know, it, it, it works against you. In terms yeah. of the larger cred the standing you have in the op you have yeah. all of the same uh, uh, credibility and purpose and and and, and credential yeah. to be in the full throw of what you're there to do. Of course, you're not there to decide. You know, you're not there um, to shrink away and yeah, and, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you know, that doesn't it's mean it has to be a fight. You yes. know? it's 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 you know when you again with musicians, you know. Are we playing together, or yes. are we not? If if I'm afraid of you because you're powerful and have a you know, and right, that's going to affect the sound. You're a rock star, yep. and I'm just some. You know, forget it. Absolutely, you're done. You're cooked. Yep. You're, you're done before you start. You know, yeah. so you need to have. Yeah. Okay. This guy caught. This guy is five hundred thousand dollars a day just to show up. He's the reason the movie got greenlit, and you know, sure. it's, uh, we're on a three hundred million dollar budget, yeah. so it's. But 3, that's him playing his role in the whole but picture. You go through the door. <laughs> we're still doing this shot yeah. and then this shot and we're in this process that is beyond all of that mm. you can't you, you're there as an equal in that process yeah. at that point is that true in some larger frame i don't know i don't yeah, care <laughs> i don't care I, I i'm there to, to contribute i'm there to make this the best i can because i love doing this Absolutely. and i'm with others that do and that currency, that, that that identity that you wear on the, on your sleeve, gets through. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, and be sure to like and subscribe as we release new videos very often. This is your host, Kim Kyland, signing off. <laughs>